church leaders in Jerusalem welcome the new Coptic Archbishop, Anbar Antonius, appointed head of the Coptic Church in Jerusalem and the Near East after Anbar Abraham's death. The Comboni sisters celebrate their 50th anniversary on Saturday, March the 5th in Jerusalem. Several projects and stories of friendship born from the ideal of helping the weakest and the most deprived. In the latest Lenten pilgrimage, the Franciscan community visit the Monastery of the Flagellation and celebrate Mass in the company of religious pilgrims and local Christians. The Polish Community Association Queen of Peace donated a precious tabernacle to the custody of the Holy Land and on Thursday, March the 3rd, it was blessed and inaugurated at the Milk Grotto in Bethlehem. For International Women's Day, we present a glimpse of the faces of the female protagonists of the Holy Land. On Saturday, March the 5th, at the Jaffa Gate into the Old City, a crowd of religious leaders, faithful and scouts, met to welcome Anbar Antonius, the new Archbishop of the Coptic Orthodox Church of Jerusalem and the Near East. Antonius is the 22nd Metropolitan Archbishop of the city and was appointed in Cairo on February the 27th as the successor of the deceased Anbar Abraham. The delegation is made up of about 60 people, representing the archbishops and bishops, deacons and lay people. In their speeches, all stressed that Anbar Antonius will continue the path of his two great predecessors, Anbar Kirillus and Anbar Abraham. My advice to him is to continue on his predecessor's way, since they were giants in the church. Everyone accompanied the new bishop to the Holy Sepulchre through the markets of the old city of Jerusalem. Anbar Antonius knelt in the atrium and kissed the anointing stone, where, by tradition, Jesus' body was prepared for burial. Then he entered the Holy Sepulchre and visited the Coptic area of the church, where he took a souvenir photo with the Egyptian delegation. I am very happy to be here in the Holy Land and be present at the nomination of a person I consider a father and a beloved brother since we come from the same monastery. I am very happy for him and wish him well. There is no question about the importance of his position. I wish him all the necessary wisdom to embrace the brothers from other churches and bring them wisdom, peace and true love. Leaving the Basilica, the scout group headed towards the Coptic Monastery of St. Anthony, where the bells rang to announce the start of the inaugural celebration. The Egyptian delegation had brought the official text of the appointment by Pope to Wadros, which was read to the public. Then Anbar Antonius took the throne as the new bishop of the Coptic Orthodox Church of Jerusalem. The first quality is humility. Humility is very important. You can tell from the expression on his face that he is a man of faith, and this is what we need. We are grateful to God for the gift of the new bishop, and thank the Lord for this beautiful celebration. In the monastery courtyard, the faithful offered their best wishes to the new bishop for his mission, that he may be a worthy heir to his predecessor and a good leader for his faithful. I will always be ready to serve your spiritual needs in the same way. These words hang on the walls of the spiritual center of the Comboni missionaries in Bethany, near Jerusalem. They are the words of the founder of the order, St. Daniel Comboni, a missionary who died in 1881 and was canonized by Pope John Paul II in 2003, seven years after his beatification. Today, the Comboni sisters are present in four different countries of the Middle East and are involved in many activities. On Saturday, March the 5th, 2016, they celebrated 50 years of presence in the Holy City, 50 years of changes and growth, always guided by the needs of the poor and the disadvantaged. The first important thing to do is to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. 
This was the ideal place as our first step, from where everything else will come. Later, we began serving the poor. During these past 50 years, we alternately assisted deprived people with several different programs. We are also now helping the Bedouins, the refugee women in Tel Aviv, and all the refugees. We visit prisons, shelters, like this one here with Palestinian children only. We help the poor and the disadvantaged. A shelter in Bethany, a community in Amman to study Arabic and offer assistance to refugees, another community in the south of Jordan linked to a hospital, and even a school in Dubai, a place among the tea plantations in Sri Lanka. The areas in which the Kamboni sisters work is varied. From education to healthcare, they welcome the poor and deprived. They assist them and give them catechesis. Everyone in the wake of a wish expressed by Kamboni. Be a meeting ground for all. I'm a physician, I'm a neurologist, and I work in Physicians for Human Rights. We do a mobile clinic. Uh, I, I go once a month, and uh, the sisters also come to the mobile clinic, and they help with translation and as nurses. I mean, they, they go every week, and uh, this is how I got to know them and uh, to appreciate them a lot. I have been a teacher in this place for 23 years. This is my second home, and I cannot live without the Komboni nuns. They are my family and my life. I really love them very much. At the Institute headquarters, we met and watched a documentary video on the 50 years of Komboni history in Jerusalem. Then we celebrated Mass, presided over by Monsignor William Shomeli, Auxiliary Bishop of the Latin Patriarchate of Jerusalem, and concluded with refreshments. So many colors, traditions and stories brought together to suggest something stronger than just differences between people. It's very special for me to be here today because we are very, very grateful to the Comboni sisters for everything that they do. We have the same beliefs in life um, about you know, our humanistic values, about um, helping people, helping to empower people, bring the best out of people. And um, to me, it doesn't matter what religion you are, what faith you are. The chapel of the Monastery of the Flagellation is too small to contain the large number of people and the outdoor patio has to be used as an extension. Dozens of monks, religious and faithful from Jerusalem gathered for the Stational Mass, which refers to the Lenten celebration in shrines that recall the Passion of the Lord. During the celebration, the traditional prayer of Vespers was also recited. In his homily, Father Frederick Manns from the Studium Biblicum Franciscanum said that nowadays the sins of mankind are scourging Jesus, and he spoke of the sufferings of Christ as the expression of God. The mercy of God is manifest in a special way on the cross and in the resurrection of Jesus. The monastery dedicated to the memory of the scourging recalls painful moments of Jesus' life, when he was humiliated, flogged with instruments of torture, and sentenced to death by those who preferred the release of Barabbas. The Passion of our Lord is the most wonderful work of God, because through it, we can be reconciled to him. And Jesus, Son of God, innocent as he was, without thereby ceasing to be God, assumed the human condition. As St. Paul said, for our redemption he became like us, except in sin. The human mind and the human heart can never understand the torment and suffering that our Lord endured for our redemption, for our salvation. The Stational Mass is now an established Franciscan tradition during Lent. It is a form of preparation for the Holy Week and also an opportunity to keep the spirituality of the sanctuaries even more alive. This is the third shrine visited by the pilgrims. 
After spending a special time at Dominus Flavit, which recalls the tears of Jesus over Jerusalem, the pilgrims also visited the Basilica of Gethsemane, where Jesus suffered great agony and was handed over to the authorities by Judas. This is the third time I participate in such a powerful experience. Lent is a time of conversion when the Church gathers together her priests and faithful. In this very special time of prayer and conversion, we look within ourselves and seek God, who is very close to us. All that is beautiful must be given to God. These simple and essential words were echoed at the Shrine of the Milk Grotto in Bethlehem on Thursday, March the 3rd. The Holy Mass was celebrated by Father Dobromir Jazdal inside the Eucharistic Adoration Chapel, and a precious new tabernacle donated to the Holy Land custody by the Polish Queen of Peace community was inaugurated and blessed. This work is inspired by the Apocalypse of St. John. The closed section of the altar represents Jerusalem on earth with the twelve apostles and the twelve tribes of Israel. Christ is at the center. The doors open after passing through him and the light that represents the heavenly Jerusalem appears. Jesus is the key to Jerusalem. Inside, two olive trees are depicted as the two witnesses of the apocalypse. Many branches grow from these trees. The branches are decorated with many different crosses to suggest how, from a single trunk, many different Christian professions may arise. This altar was designed for Jerusalem. At first it was placed in the fourth station, where, however, it was difficult to organize Eucharistic adoration. Then the association decided to donate this altar to an institution that already had the Eucharistic adoration. They identified this place here in the convent, in the Milk Grotto Church of the Holy Land Custody, where for some years now the sisters have maintained the perpetual Eucharistic adoration. This is for us a great gift. A tabernacle so great and beautiful that was donated to the custody. They gave it to us because we pray day and night for the whole world. We also pray for peace now. The association's main objective is the promotion of prayer for peace through perpetual adoration. One of their most ambitious projects, called 12 Stars in the Crown of the Virgin Mary, Queen of Peace, aims to find or create 12 centers around the world where people can pray in communion with one another. The real source of peace is Jesus. What we need is to have a peace from Him in our hearts. And then if we have the peace in our hearts, uh, we will have a peace uh, between the nations, uh, between the, in our families, in our uh, in our environments. This gift is for this place, for the uh, gro milk grotta, that people come to to this place could stay in the front of Jesus, the source of peace, and take the the, the grace of peace in their hearts and brought it all over the world. Yeah.
Terra Santa News is a production of the Christian Media Center in Jerusalem, Holy Land. For more information about Terra Santa News and the Christian Media Center, please check out our website at the bottom of the screen. You'll also be able to subscribe to our newsletter to view live video feeds from the Holy Land as well as visit our Facebook and YouTube pages and follow our Twitter feed. Come visit the website of Terra Santa News.